Thank you, Priti. Uh, do you hear me well? Uh, so, as Priti said, my name is Bruno. I come from Nubank. Uh, I'll talk a little about uh, canonical chaos uh, through litmus. But first of all, uh, I'm going to present you for those, those that don't know uh, Nubank. Uh, Nubank is uh, is the world's uh, world large, largest digital banking platform outside Asia. We have like more than a uh, uh, hundred million customers uh, across three countries: Brazil, Colombia, and Mexico. Uh, and we are, we are the fourth uh, biggest uh, financial institution in Latin America by the number of customers. Right. Uh, a little bit about our agenda. Uh, first, we're going to talk a little bit about the value of canonicity. Uh, and how that uh, is related to our culture and our decision-making process. Uh, we are going to talk about new CLI and how, which is the role of new CLI on, on, on our engineering team and how that is, is related to the chaos experiments that we run here. Uh, we are going to talk about Kenos, that is our service level chaos engineering platform and a little bit about the next steps that we are planning for the future. Okay, uh, regarding the value of canonicity, uh, for, for me that I, I come from Brazil, like canonica, can, canonical approach or canonicity, that word seems like a little bit weird for me, but uh, it, it, it just means that we have the full ways to do things, right? or at least we have like clear paths uh, on how to solve problems using technology, right? Uh, we have a very nice uh, blog post uh, on our engineer blog, uh, the link is below on the slide that talks in details of, uh, about the value of canonicity. But basically, we want to incentivize uh, when a new situation compels us to have different technologies that provide better value for a given task. For example, we, we have like types of variants on, on when we are dealing with technology. We have like uh, essential variants and non essential variants. So we want to avoid non essential variants. To make that more clear is that we want to have canonical ways of doing things. We prefer to do that, uh, things like that. And we have like a bunch of, uh, of advantages. Uh, uh, one of them is related to how we deal with technology, especially programming language. We use Clojure uh, programming language a lot here. Uh, and that helps a lot on, on solving problems because Nubank uh, divides itself into groups of uh, small cross functional teams. And we went, our goal is to be self-sufficient, right? So we want to reduce the dependency between teams. So building things on a common language or on a, on a common language or in a common way, uh, we can avoid the dependency of, from one team to another because another team can just jump in, jump in into another, another team service and change that and then block them. So we, we, we can go uh, uh, faster with that kind of approach, right? And regarding our canonical stack or how the way, the canonical way that we, we handle things, we create closure services through ESA portal. ESA portal is something uh, similar to the, to the backstage, um, Spotify backstage. I, I know we've heard about, are about, but it's a service catalog. You can run an operation so we can start a new service from there. Uh, so. When you create a new service on ESA, it will create like the GitHub repo, it will uh, create the skeleton of the closure services, and it will also create a, a, a service definition file. Uh, a service definition file is a, it's a hidden file. Hidden is like a, a, a text format for, 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 for closure. It's similar to JSON. Uh, but the main purpose of this is like, that we have like abstract way to define services and, and say, okay, the name of the service is this, this service is, has this amount of memory, these are, are the alerts related to the service. So we have like a very good service catalog. catalog. Uh, and that catalog is defined in a, it's not my, uh, tied to technology specific things. Like we run microservices, we have a lot of services, but uh, we run on Kubernetes as well, but uh, but we 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 try to not be tied to to the, the specific things of uh, technologies that we are we're facing when we are defining a common language to describe a service. 
And so we, the, the services, the disclosure services are, are, are built and deployed through Tecton pipeline. So we, we rely on, on Tecton workflows for that. Uh, they're deployed on Kubernetes clusters, clusters and then they're monitored by Prometheus to be more precise with Victoria metrics. And also what is a canonical thing that we have here at Nubank is uh, new CLI, right? So if you're an engineer uh, at Nubank, you run new CLI commands all the day, right? And also people from other teams as well, they run new CLI for other stuff. So we have that kind of uh, mechanism uh, that people are used to, right? So that, that was the context of, of Nubank and, and how can we approach this, uh, simplify our lives. And don't, let, let's talk a little bit of how that fits to the chaos engineer uh, services that we built that is called Kenos. But first of all, we'd like to say that we, we did that like, like that uh, last year, but was, our goal was just to enable service level chaos engineer at Nubank for the, the, entire, the entire company but we would like to, to people to just focus on the main aspects of case engineering that is defining hypotheses and executing experiments to prove the resilience of their services, right? So we want to reduce any cognitive load uh, related to a specific tool from the market or a specific naming standard from other vendors. So we, we wanted to make it more in a new bank way, right? Uh, and with that, we built Kenos. Kenos works like that, like that's uh, just a, a re big uh, representation of it. But uh, when you use Kenos, you use it by 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 running a command on a new cell line or also by using a Tecton workflow. That it, it, that Tecton workflow allows you to schedule an experiment to run like every day, or also you could uh, just tie, uh, integrate that to the CI CD pipeline to run Kenos experiments on, on the CI CD pipeline. So bo both of these clients of our service, uh, they uh, call our services through HTTP. So our service is, uh, is a closure service. Uh, and that uh, command uh, will be dispatched for our chaos provider. Uh, we use mainly Litmus. And all of these things run on a separate cluster. So we have like a Litmus control plane and, and, and a Kenos uh, uh, deployment uh, together. And with that, when we we we, we make an API call to Litmus, uh, Litmus is able to co is connected to the right uh, agent or subscriber, and 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 this and has the capability to inject the filler on the target cluster. So we have a like a lot of uh, Kubernetes clusters uh, running a lot of services in different countries, and, and some clusters are are related to some specific products and things like that, but. The thing here is like we we have like this central control plane distributing uh, chaos through uh, through the target clusters, uh, so we can uh, perform uh, chaos engineering. Uh, one another thing to to say a little bit about, but I, I will take into the, the details uh, later. That chaos centralizes the authentication and authorization mechanisms. Like uh, we have like uh, authorization and authentication also on Litmus, but we. We rely on our side to do some specific stuff that we want to, and I will talk a little bit more about later. Uh, so we have Kenos, and and but but why we build that service? But why we did it that way, right? So what we have like some engineering principles, like there are patterns of success uh, that serve as, as a guide to assist on our engineering process. Uh, and we have like a few, six, six uh, principles, but we, we're going to talk a little bit more about three of them, like uh, that are canonical approaches, consistent applied, customer's trust is hard to earn and easy to lose, and leverage platforms. So about the canonical one, that was uh, the, the main topic. Uh, we have a single, single and extensible way to perform a service level engineering. So centralize that into, into Kenos uh, was uh, a way to do it. We make it consistent through through our own API, so we can control versions also the, and the payload of our experiment. So we have our, our common understanding that that comes from XP programming uh, and I think a Jio manifesto about having a sharing understanding and making things faster to, to to communicate between teams. So we have like a very uh, good glossary about how we, we see our services and our our 
in environment, and we use that to, to express a, a, a experiment. Uh, about the safety and, and the trust, we have like two kinds of customers, right? We have the engineers and also the end customer that is like using the, his credit card and things like that. We want to guarantee that we are performing the, the most uh, safe uh, experiment that we can, right? So we we want to have the best blessed radio control and we want to increase safety through safety falls. So I'll talk a little bit more about later and also having our own fine-grained authorization and authentication mechanism. Uh, and leverage platform, so Canvas is a closure service that any can, anything can change its source code uh, and or use the API to, to leverage their, or their own use case. Uh, and Litmus is our main case platform for provider, right? So one of the things that we wanted to do to bring to engineers, uh, we wanted something easy to use for a regular engineer at the bank. So we have like the widespread new, new CLI adoption. Uh, also the uh, the tactile integration that is something that uh, engineers already know because they use to schedule things or, or, or run uh, workflows on on their their CI CD pipelines. We we have. We wanted to make it simpler, so we we simplify the number of parameters and configurations. So because Litmus uh, is very is a very powerful platform, and that's uh, the main purpose of a platform to be very complete and provide uh, the ways to compose things and extend things. But for our end user, we would like to bring something more more uh, more precise or more straightforward to the things that people want to do. Uh, during their uh, chaos experiment. For example, we, we don't want people to change the engine of some stress uh, experiment, right? We are going to have like a default one that is validated, is that, that's the one. So people are not taking into account what is going on under the hood, right? Uh, and also we have like our uh, abstraction, as I said, and alert uh, naming conventions, right? So that simplify uh, users' uh, life when when they are configuring their probes. So we don't, again, we don't provide a visibility for end users on Canos to all kind of kinds of probe that Litmus has, right? Because Litmus has a lot of probes, right? But the, the only one that uh, matters for us right now is is alert on Prometheus. So. And we have the names of the alerts, and and now every service has a, like a default alert. So we 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 wanted to people to to use or what we already have to bring confidence about if the services is on the steady state or not and that's our lids uh regarding safe default right so we talked a little bit about uh so we we have uh when you're running experimental litmus you can provide labels to match bonds and things like that so we wanted to to hide those implementation details from engineers so they know that they have a service that the, the name of the services is this one that is deployed on this cluster so it, it will just provide the information like that he, he, the developer is already uh already knows that so it doesn't uh it could take match the pod on the, the right pod on the right account with, with the, the the right environment uh without any kind of uh Kind of risk of matching the pods in a in a not uh, proper way. We wanted to reduce the input errors or uh, on CPU memory and experiments, so we we don't provide uh, like the parameters for our end users, right? We don't provide, uh, for example, we have the stress energy CPU cores and uh, CPU loads. So that, these are things related to how to configure a, C, a, C, a CPU hard experiment, right? But related to stress energy. So what we did, we, we we just said to engineers, okay, you provide a number of percentage that we want to increase on the CPU, and uh, we are going to increase that amount of CPU. So if your current load is 10%, and you put more 10%, it's going to become to a 20% load service, right, on, on CPU, for example. That that um, brings more clarity for, for our, our engineers on, on how they're, what they're performing and what is the, uh, what what is are going to be the consequences to, to the service right? Uh, we with safe defaults we also reduce the uh, risk of butterfly effect on network experiments. So we 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 put on the canonical path of dealing with the, the experiment uh, a way that it will just uh, 
it will explicitly say the hosts that will be affected and the, and the ports and, and so we reduce the risk of matching like every communication of a pod and bringing like a very huge uh, uh, consequence of if something goes wrong, right? So we, we, we prefer to give less at the beginning and, and it will expand over time uh, when, he, uh, when the engineer is using. And also we have something that I think it's one of the most important things regarding safety. You cannot run an experiment without a probe. So for us, if you don't provide a probe, you're going to get the, the, the for example, you're, you're running a, a experiment on a service, call it A, right? So we are going to get all alerts of A and and then and, and put on as as default. Actually, we we we, act, we use only one, but we could use every one, every alert. But you get a, a very nice alert that checks for the health of the service. So we are kind of safe because that alert will bring some kind of uh, validation for the, the engineer. So uh, we don't have any situation uh, if that an engineer can run an experiment without a probe. But the engineer can also create an alert and a probe for for, for, for its own experiment and, and, and run like that. But again, you know, the engineer is explicitly, uh, explicitly telling what, what he's doing, right? Uh, so regarding safety, uh, we also uh, wanted to control uh, the authorization and authentication mechanism by our own, our own selves, because uh, security is a main concern, it's a core competence for, for no bank because it's a, we are a financial institution, right? So the first thing that Nucle gives us current engineering authentication mechanism for free, right? So because we already have like uh, some certificates and uh, tokens and the, all the the, the infrastructure for security when we are running a nuclei, a new CLI command uh, that will uh, reach, reach a, a, a closure service, and then we can do the fine graded authorization and uh, that we want. So we, we uh, that's something that we 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 decided to to take to ourselves. So in that way, we if we we can isolate, for example, uh, engineers access by country due to regulatory reasons, and if any new country that we we, we want to to deploy has a different uh, regulatory constraint, we can implement that uh, security uh, validation on our service without need need to change uh, on, on the third party tool, right? Uh, always we we always patch also specific labels to have our tracking on what it, what has being done, who triggered the experiment, and things like that. So we have our, our own way of, uh, of patching those labels to be, bring tracking, right? And what we enabled uh, until now are five types of experiments, pod delete, CPU memory, CPU uh, memory hog, uh, CPU hog and memory hog, uh, network latency and network loss. Uh, so these these are the experiments that we we, we execute uh, today at Nubank uh, on on staging, and also we have some experiments running on production. And what about our next steps, right? So what we talked about here is how we achieve uh, uh, service level case experiments, right? So right in so the, 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 our current step is to enable that for infrastructure as well. So we are kind of evolving on that. Uh, and we also have uh, room for improvements on how we use scanners. Uh, so we want to make it easier to deploy lithium agents on multiple clusters. Um, the, uh, because we have a relation between the 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 agent, uh, like the deployment of the agent and the agent, uh, like the entity on the database on, on the the portal side. So we want to have a, a, a easier way to deploy that right now we have like a bunch of uh, batch scripts that you you execute and then it will uh properly provision the the the, the agent but we would like to go to something more more uh like a infrastructure as a code or things like that we want also to scale scale the adoption through the automatic suggestions of canonical experiments so we we face this issue that i think that this is a very common issue uh where people engineers don't have idea of which kind of experience to run right so in so we have some kind of things that could be suggested 
uh, for for uh, for our engineers that we're trying to call uh, as canonical experience. I'll, I'll give you an example. Like, uh, for example, if I delete a pod, what, what is expected to 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 happen, right? So I, I expect to have some degradation on some uh, metric that I, I have. For example, I can have like HTTP latency would would decrease or would increase because uh, we are dealing with uh, less pods until the next pod takes uh, uh, takes his place, right? Uh, so we could just say, okay, this is the canonical uh, way of uh, handling pod deletes, right? So checking for that. And with that, we could scale, uh, scale uh, automatically, right? We also have uh, the pain of analysis, like people, engineers that are running experience, they, they see that they take too much time to analyze uh, what, what was going on and what was the difference between the control group and the experimental group. So I think AI can uh, help a lot on that. Uh, we want to continuously improve the blast radio mechanisms and the authorization control. So this is something that we have right now, but we, we, we need also to have more control and keep uh, improving, right? And we want, want to run chaos on CI/CD pipeline. That's something that we don't do yet, but we are in. We can do that because we have technical tools uh, running chaos experience. But we already we 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 still don't do uh, right. So that's something that we, we want want to do. And also, we're going to we have like a chaos community uh, inside the, the company that we want to uh, keep the, this community engaged through new new releases and tech talks and close support. So. People are always talking and perf uh, performing chaos, talking about chaos experiment and performing chaos experiments uh, as well. Uh, that's our team. Like uh, we have Kainam, our manager, me, Giovanna, Kenji, and Amarilis. So that's the team, the resilience team. And we, we call it here at Nubank. That's uh, that develop uh, this tool and, and uh, it's bringing chaos to reality at Nubank. I also would like to thank you, thanks for the Litmus community because I, 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 made, I, made, I made a lot of questions on the Slack channel and people uh, helping me a lot during uh, this time. So a big thanks to everyone that on the Litmus community and also for other product teams as like New, New Colombia team on our product side that helped us to, to start with Litmus and GBA, Bruno Costa and, and people at Nubank that are, are our heavy users uh, of Chaos Engineering. Uh, so that's it for today. All right, Bruno, we have a couple of questions for you. Uh, if you would like to answer them, one of them is on stage. So the question is uh, from Cyan, he asks, you mentioned butterfly effect. Is there any specific instances where you mitigated a potential time bomb outage waiting to happen via network chaos experiments? Mm -hmm uh i don't think i understand the question like uh i mean it, it's, well, it's more like well, yeah it's we like... didn't mitigate it like we avoid the risk of, of having like for example if a service a calls three services right so uh maybe the heavy thing is one service A. So you, you, we, we provide a way that people start to provide uh, their target host one by one. So the, they need to uh, explicitly declare that they want to uh, interrupt the network communication or affect the network communication for uh, service A, service B and service C, right? So, so they, they might have like a situation that they have like a, uh, a big problem, but uh, the engineer should explicitly uh, say that he, he he or she is trying to do that. All right. Uh, I hope this answers your question, Cyan. Uh, next up, we have one more question from the community. That is, what has your experience been like using Prometheus probes? What would you like to see improved? Okay. Oh, oh, it's it's been okay, right? Because it, it's a very simple uh, call to Prometheus, so we, we just check for a result of expression. Uh, I so I don't have anything to complain, and, and it's working pretty well, right? So that's it. 
But uh, yeah, it, it's a Prometheus probe. Just to make sure, uh, like I said about the alerts, right? So a Prometheus probe is a query on Prometheus, right? So for a specific metric. Uh, the thing here is like we we don't allow people to run the, their own query because alert itself it's a metric on Prometheus, right? So if you have an alert, uh, it will like display as a metric on Prometheus. So we we always say to, to engineers, okay, you need to create an alert for for a case experiment with the condition that you 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 say that it is going to match uh, uh, if the, that condition match the alert is triggered, so that that uh, should mean a failure or a, a non steady state for your service, and we just check if that alert alert is triggering or, or firing or painting, so the, the the state of alert. So we don't extensively use all the kinds of Prometheus probes. We just query for a specific metric there. All right, I think uh, that's the answer from Bruno for the community and I hope uh, this helps and thank you again for uh, not having any complaints with the Prometheus probe really. But yeah, that's it uh, from Bruno's session and if you have any other questions, feel free to post them on Slack. I'll, I'll just create a thread with uh, on the Litmus Slack on the Kubernetes workspace. And with this, we come to the end for Bruno's session. Thank you so much once again, Bruno.